What we're going to be going over here is the factory overhead budget, and we'll go through an example on how we calculate this factory overhead budget. So first we start with our master budget, and under our master budget we have our operating budget, and then we have our financial budget. So for our factory overhead, that ends up under our operating budget. So under our operating budget, we have to determine our sales budget, determine our sales unit that we have to sell, and then based on our sales units or on our sales budget, then we can determine our production budget to determine how many uh, units that we have to produce. Now under the production budget, this is where we have to determine our factory overhead here. So under the production budget, we're going to have our direct materials, direct labor budget, and our factory overhead budget. And then to continue on from there, uh, knowing our direct materials or direct labor and our factory overhead budget, we can determine our ending inventory budget. And then based on our sales and our ending inventory costs, we can determine our cost of goods sold. And then those cost of goods sold would flow into the income statement budget. So what we're going to be looking at is this factory overhead budget, how we calculate calculate that. So first off, we're going to have to determine the uh, factory overhead uh, uh, budget numbers that we're going to have to come up with. And uh, that's going to be the factory overhead cost. And then based on those factory overhead costs, we're going to be able to determine the cash payments that we have to make here for our factory overhead. Now these cash payments, remember, they're tied into the cash budget here so under the, and that's under the financial budget so under our cash budget here we're going to have to make payments here to uh, account for our factory overhead or to pay payments here on our factory overhead so cash is going to flow from our cash budget uh, to our factory overhead so those are the two things we're going to be looking at here for factory overhead first the uh, budget, budgeted factory overhead costs and then the payments that we're going to have to make here or cash payments for our factory overhead Okay, so let's go over here. So what we're going to be looking at here is the factory overhead budget. And we, this is where we start with our factory uh, budgeted factory overhead costs here. And those equal the budgeted fixed overhead cost plus the budgeted variable overhead rate times the direct hours needed for uh, needed here and that's going to be from the direct labor budget so we're going to have to be working with this direct labor budget as well here to get those numbers here and then based on our budgeted factory overhead costs here once we know that then we can determine the cash payments for the uh, factory overhead here and that would equal again the budgeted factory overhead costs that we calculated up here and then we'd have to subtract from that the depreciation and any other amortized costs that really don't require any cash payments. So two things we have to do. We have to determine our factory overhead costs here and then we have to determine our cash payments. Okay, so we'll continue on with our example. Now for our calculations for our factory overhead budget. Remember these are budget estimates here and for our example it's going to be based on a single product here but you'd have to go through all the products that the company is selling here in order to determine your total factory overhead budget but we'll just follow it through here in a single product and we're also going to be looking at just a specific month here the month of March here to determine our factory overhead budget and we'll start with our unit sales here uh, for, our, for our sales budget the uh, sales department says for the month of March they're projecting unit sales here of 11,000 units and we're also going to be looking at the April uh, unit sales here sales departments projecting 12,000 unit sales so the next thing we have to know for our example here is the desired ending inventories here and we're going to be looking at our ending inventories for our finished goods here and for our example we're saying here that uh, we're going to have five percent of the next period sales here for our finished goods in our ending inventories and really that's based on the fact here that your desired ending inventory is usually based on the next period's sales budget here so that's where we're going to be working with that 12,000 units here in April that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be doing, with, working with here is this factory overhead. So what we have for our variable factory overhead here, uh, and we're looking at it on a per unit here. In this case, we're just selling one product here. So on a per unit basis for this product, we're saying that uh, we're going to have our uh, direct labor here based on our direct labor amounts. We're going to have four tenths of an hour here uh, for our direct labor for both our variable and our fixed amounts here and that's what we're going to be basing our 
uh, overhead rates on here. So for our variable overhead rate, we're going to our cost is going to be based on thirty dollars per hour. And if we have four tenths of an our four tenths of an hour here for our direct labor uh, times thirty dollars per hour, our total cost per uh, unit here for variable overhead is going to be $12 and then for a fixed overhead same thing We're saying in this case it's going to be a $50 per hour cost here for a fixed overhead again for four tenths of an hour here for direct labor So tighten that times the $50 overhead per hour cost you're going to get for a unit cost here for fixed overhead is going to be $20 Okay, so the other thing we're going to be dealing with here and this is critical when we're dealing with these overhead problems here we're going to have to determine in this case, the total uh, direct labor our overhead, our, fact, our direct labor hours that we're looking at for the month is going to be 4,800 hours. And that's what we're going to be pace, basing our fixed overhead on. And that's really looking at the case where you have 12,000 uh, uh, average, averaging per month here, 12,000 direct labor hours. And if you take uh, four tenths of an hour here per unit, that's where you get your 4,800 uh, direct uh, uh, factory overhead, uh, direct labor hours for the period. So uh, our fixed overhead is going to be, a rate is going to be based on these 4,800 standard direct labor hours on a per month basis. So that's what we're going to look at for the month of March here. Okay, now for our calculations here. So for our factory overhead budget, again, looking at the month of March here, first thing we have to do is uh, determine our budgeted fixed overhead here. And that's simply taking your fixed overhead rate here times your total standard uh, hours here that are being budgeted. And in this case, our fixed overhead rate here was $50 per direct labor hour times 4,800 hours. That's the total amount that we budgeted for the, for the period here for the month. That's going to give us, what, $240,000. Okay, so the next thing we have to look at is our budgeted variable overhead cost. And this is where we take our variable overhead rate here times the direct labor hours needed here. For the, the month here that we need. So this is where we're going to come in with this. We're going to have to do some calculations here to determine those direct hours needed. And that's going to cough, come off our direct labor budget and, and also going to be part of the, we're going to have to look at our production budget here. So in this case, our variable overhead is just $30 per direct labor hour times, and it's going to be 4,420 direct labor hours that we need here for the month. And that multiplies out to 132000 $600. So let's go back and let's look at how we calculate the, the, the direct labor hours that we need here, this 4,420 hours. Okay, so we have to go down here and we have, there's really a two-step process. We first have to look at our production budget for uh, the month here of March, the month of March here, and then our unit sales uh, that were projected here uh, for the month is 11,000. Uh, units here and then we have to add to it the desired ending finished goods and in this case we're looking at that next month the eight, month of april here and we're working for that off that five percent uh amount here of our finished goods that we want so we take five percent here times the unit sales that we're looking at in the next month here the month of april here uh those are twelve thousand units five percent of the twelve thousand units is going to give us 600 units here in our desired ending finished goods inventory then we have to subtract from at the beginning finished goods inventory. And this is where we look for our current month, the month of March here. Again, 5% here of our inv ending inventory that we're looking at times the unit sales here for March. And that was 11,000 units. So 5% of that is gonna give us 550 units here. Now that the beginning finished inventory goods is 550 has to be subtracted from our totals up here. So the subtracting those out, our units to be produced here for the month of March is 11,050 units. Budgeted sales were 11,000, but the units that we have to produce based on our beginning and ending inventories is 11,050. Okay, so now we can use that number and we can go into our direct labor budget here. So we have to determine the direct labor hours needed for production here. That's simply taking those units that we have to produce, so that's 11,050 units here, times, in this case, uh, the, on a per, uh, dir direct labor per unit here is four tenths of an hour. So we take that times 11,050 units, and we're gonna get total direct labor hours at 4,420 hours. Okay, so we've calculated our total 
uh, lab direct labor hours we need. So just going back up to our factory overhead budget, again, our variable overhead, $30 per hour here times the, what we calculated, the 4,420 direct labor hours that we need here for production. Uh, that's going to give us, what, $132,600. So adding our fixed portion here to $240,000 and our $132,600 here for our variable portion, our total budgeted factory overhead cost is going to be $372,600. Now, the cash payments in this case, we're just going to say that, this, we're going to just say that uh, our non-cash part of it is going to be $100,000 here for depreciation. So we have to subtract that from our total factory overhead cost to determine our cash payment. So taking the $372,600, subtracting the $100,000 here for those non-cash expenses, our depreciation. And you do that for all your non-cash expenses. But we're just using depreciation as an example. So the difference is going to give us $272,600 here. That's our budgeted factory overhead cost. That's the cost that we're going to actually have or the cash payments that we're going to have. Okay, now uh, looking at this $372,600, we really have an alternative method of looking at that here. So you could look at it in these terms. Remember we talked about the fact that we have 4,420 hours here of total direct labor hours here and then our uh, fixed overhead and our variable overhead were based on direct labor hours. So we have $50 here for fixed overhead and thirty dollars per hour here for direct labor for variable overhead those total to eighty dollars so taking our total overhead here at eighty dollars per hour times our total direct labor hours here at forty four hundred and twenty we're going to get up to three hundred fifty three thousand six hundred dollars here in uh, budgeted factory overhead here or what we have here for our overhead costs now we can come up with the difference here because remember we talked about that 4,800 hours here. That's what we budgeted and that's what we have to account for. So the difference between our 4,800 hours here and our 4,420 hours, the actual amount of uh, uh, direct labor that we're going to have here, uh, the difference is 380 hours. So you take the 380 hours here times the fixed overhead rate here of $50 per hour, that's going to give you $19,000 here. So adding that to our amount here of $353,600, our total budgeted overhead is $372,600. So we came up with the same amount here just using this alternative approach. Just remember this 380 hours here, that is 380 hours, that's planned below, that's what we have here, and it's below the budgeted amount here of 4,800 hours. The 4,220 hours is below our budgeted amount here of 4,800 hours by 380 hours. And that's really called an unfavorable production of volume variance here. Okay, so we had really two approaches here to determine our budgeted factory overhead, going back to our account here for our budgeted factory overhead. Okay, so that's how we go about determining our factory overhead budget here. Now let's just go and we'll summarize that here. Okay, so just moving over here, uh, our factory overhead budget, that's just, it's, uh, we just take our budgeted factory overhead cost, and those equal our budgeted fixed overhead, plus we have to add to it the budgeted variable overhead rate times that amount, of your variable overhead rate times the direct labor hours needed here from, and it would come from your direct labor budget based on your production budget here. So that's what we did here to determine our budgeted factory overhead costs. Now we took those budgeted factory overhead costs here and to determine our cash payments we took those uh, overhead costs that we calculated here and then we had to subtract out all those uh, to determine our cash payments we had to subtract out all those non-cash expenses like depreciation. I just showed depreciation here but it would be all your amortization that are non-cash expenses. You'd have to subtract your non-cash expenses here, uh, anything that doesn't require a cash payment, from your total budgeted fixed overhead cost to determine your cash payments for your overhead dollars. Okay, so those are really a summary here of how we determine our factory overhead budget. We did it just in terms of one product here, interest to, to one product, but you'd have to track it through all products and then you'd have to be looking at all those uh, labor costs and those overhead costs based uh, applying them to each of the products that you'd be tracking them through 
for to determine your total factory overhead budget for the period. And then again, we just looked at one month here, but you'd have to do that for all the months of the year. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion here on our calculations for our factory overhead budget.